No one investigates like News 4. Government provided cell phones. They're a lifeline for many, but for others, they're just another way of racking up charges that taxpayers are forced to pay off. Lifeline started as a way to make sure that the poor were not cut off from communicating with others. But does everyone using it play by the rules? And if they don't, are you the one left footing the bill? News 4's Emily Guggenmus investigated the program, and what she found out is surprising. Since the 80s, the federal government has been offering up free phones for the needy through a subsidy. Those enrolled in programs like Medicaid, food stamps, and HEAP automatically qualify. In 2005, the rules changed, allowing cell phones to be added to the mix. Then in 2008, the first prepaid cell phone entered the market. And from there, subscribers to the program began to soar. In March of 2005, there were 7.2 million enrolled. Fast forward to March of this year, 17.1 million subscribers. I understand this program started under Ronald Reagan, um, but at the time, you know, the economy was different. We've got to be really tough about tightening our belts. The cupboards are bare. Uh, we're spending beyond our means. And while we do have an obligation as government to take care of the most vulnerable and, and those that, that need assistance, there is a line. And let's face it, we didn't used to have cell phones, so... Uh, you know, it begs the question why why someone thinks that's now turned into a necessity. But for Patricia Frank, she says it is a necessity. And for this senior citizen, it's all about safety and emergencies. I was diagnosed with vertigo about four years ago, and I have a tendency to be very tipsy. In fact, she's fallen quite a few times and is unable to get up. The cell phone gives her security. She carries it everywhere she goes, just in case. I have fallen in the yard and I've had the phone so I could reach my grandson and he's come for me. For many senior citizens on fixed incomes, the name says it all. It is a lifeline for them. And that's why for Frank and senior Richard Clark, it can be frustrating knowing there are so many abusing the program. You know, the, now the program is going to not the needy, but the greedy. The greedy who have not one cell phone, but multiple phones. The FCC tells me that they can get them by going to different cell phone companies or companies who are handing out more than one. I've seen people with multiple cell phones, like, uh, you know, an old acquaintance I'd run into, and they tell me, um, here's a bunch of my phone numbers. You know, they have more than one. If this one runs out of minutes, call me on this number. If that one, you know, doesn't have any minutes, call me on that number, and you'll see three, four, or five cell phones in their possession at one given time. It is not, it's not hard at all. Um, all you have to do, use somebody, a family member's address, family member's name, and you can pick your phone up in there. I mean, you can use your own name and put it in uh, somebody else's address, but again, the government, the government is very lax. On, on, on double dipping. If you take a look at your cell phone bill, you'll probably find a universal service fee. Now this charge pays for the Lifeline program. Any phone company that offers long distance has to pay into the fund, and most pass that fee on to subscribers. Federal rules prohibit eligible low-income consumers from receiving more than one Lifeline discount per household. It can be a landline or a cell phone, but not both. The problem? There's been a gross amount of abuse. A spokesman for the FCC tells News 4 the proper controls haven't been in place in the past. In January, the FCC overhauled and reformed the program. Since the beginning of the year, $43 million have been saved by getting rid of duplicate subscribers and unnecessary subsidies. The FCC is hoping to save $2 billion over the next three years. Still, people on the street say it may not stop the problem. Basically, buying off of people on the street that need it. You know, they have the cell phone, they need the money, you know, buy cheap, $20. You know, and they got 251 minutes a month for, you know, as long as they want. The FCC is creating a database that will help prevent repeat subscribers. Still, local lawmakers would like to see all the abuse end. In a letter to the FCC, Congressman Brian Higgins writes, I understand the goals of the USF program to provide low-income families with a jump start to purchase phone plans and service. However, it is unfair to ask working families of Western New York to pay for free cell phones and minutes for their neighbors. Because what the public may not realize is if you have a cell phone that's charged up, and you're not on a plan, you can dial 911 and someone answers. That report by Emily Guggenmus. The database is expected to launch next year. Lifeline subscribers violating the single phone rule may be subject to criminal and civil penalties.